everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world. If you haven't seen my previous videos on this jigsaw puzzle, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you watch at least the unboxing just to get an overview of the puzzle. Now, to date, I have completed three sections along this side right here. This is the panoramic poster of the entire puzzle. I decided that the next section I want to work on is part of the bookcase, the bookshelf, the library. I just, I just really want to do one to see what it's all about. So I'm going to do this first lower section right here of the bookshelf and here it is. It's actually section 26. There you go, lots of books, the chair and the kitty cat. I think the chair will be a bit easy to do, but I'm worried about all the brown in the bookshelf section. We shall see. Now, with the voiceover for this one, I contacted Graphica and they told me a bit about the artist, Mathieu Martin, who designed the four bookshelf sections for them. So when I voice over, I'll discuss him and his work, as well as some other little tidbits that I know about the puzzle. So without further ado, and for the love of puzzles, let's get to work on our fourth bag of many more to come as we travel around art. I contacted Graphica because I wanted to know more information about the artist Mathieu Martin that they credit for the bookshelf sections of this puzzle. Now there are four of the 27 sections which are basically what I like to call the library, but a large bookshelf section. And on the paperwork, the documentation that I received, the artist was Mathieu Martin. Well, Graphica got back in touch with me and they gave me his information, which was really nice. So you'll see pop up now, like some images from his website. He is a freelance um, artist, graphic artist, if you want, or illustrator. And he's done a lot of work that's very much, um, I would say, what's the word I'm looking for? Fantasy-esque. I guess he's worked on like board games as well as card games. Also, it says here on his contact details that not only does he do like designs for albums as well as novels, but also like sculptures and figurines, 3D modeling, which is really cool. He graduated from L'Ecole Emile Co. And I looked that up. That's a design school in Lyon, France. So yeah, quite interesting. And also I'll include an image here of his Instagram page. I'll link all the website and his Instagram details down below go check them out. I think what I'll do for the next section of the bookshelf is I'll reach out to him and maybe he'll get back in touch and I'll just ask him a few questions about his design process for these bookshelf areas. Um, if he doesn't get back in touch with me, that's fine. You know, I'm sure he's busy. But yeah, I just thought it was really cool because looking at the images on his website, they're very different, obvious, to the bookshelf sections, but I do kind of still feel like the same type of sense or feeling. I don't know. Like, I get the association between his artwork and the bookshelf sections. Like, I can see the connection between the two, although quite different. So, yeah, I thought it was really nice that Graphica gave me his contact details so I could figure out who he was. But, yeah, so Mathieu Martin, a freelance illustrator from France. Now, on top of that, I decided to go ahead and try to figure out the overall weight of this puzzle. So I weighed some bags, did some math, and I realized I should have probably weighed all the bags before I started assembling the puzzle. That's a bit too late. And I know that the sections that have edges or two edges to them will weigh slightly less because the prongs will be cut off. But because the puzzle is the exact same numbers in the same cut, it'll be close enough. So the weight of the entire puzzle is approximately or just over like 21 kilograms, which is about like 47 pounds. So it's quite significant because when you think about it, paper can be quite heavy. 
I mean, just a ream of paper is heavy. And when I was moving around the three sections from the last puzzle uh, video that I put up where I did the whole first column, it was kind of awkward because not only is it bigger and I had it on a big foam board and I'm trying to go through doors and I had to tilt it and it got heavy-ish enough. I mean, you know, um, but I thought that was quite cool. I did want to know the overall approximate weight of the puzzle. So it's about just around, just over, you know, 21 kilos, about 47 pounds. This section was so much fun to put together. I really enjoyed it because it kind of broke things up. It was very different from the three last sections that I've done. Now, a few things, I have my notes, so excuse me if I look down. It took me approximately 15 hours and 10 minutes to assemble. And even though that's a bit more than some of the other sections that I've done, I would still consider this to be an easy section. At first I thought the chair would be quite easy, but the white and gray was actually a bit tricky. And I was worried that the brown would be quite difficult, the bookcase part. But to tell you the truth, there was enough detail in all the pieces with the lines between the different shelves and the books and edges to, that it really wasn't all that bad. Once I got going with those last pieces, it actually went pretty okay. It didn't feel as bad as those beige background pieces from section 10, the second bag that I completed. So although it took me longer, I didn't feel it was harder. I actually thought it was easy enough to do. Now, um, I was worried also that there'd be quite a few false fits because of uh, the browns, but no, not as bad as the last section with the frame. Remember I talked about that I had maybe less than 10, but a few false fits with that frame. But to tell you the truth, I didn't really have that many false fits or any here that I, that I noticed or that drew my attention. The one thing that did happen um, when I got down to the browns, I sorted the pieces and I took out all the, what I'll call specialty pieces, but all the pieces that weren't two prong kind of standard pieces. And then I realized at the top that there should be either a two prong or three prong piece that went and I didn't have one. And I was actually worried that I was missing a piece. So what I did discover is that the puzzle is the same cut section to section. So I went and found the same section um, from another part of the puzzle and I looked and sure enough, I needed a three prong piece that was kind of flat and long. I was worried that maybe I had like a false fit, but no, it wasn't the case. 
I was missing that piece. So I thought, oh goodness, oh, I'm missing a piece from the puzzle. I looked in the bag, I looked on the floor, I looked everywhere. Well, luckily it turned up, I had just missorted it. It was in the pile of two prong standard pieces. But it was kind of nice that I was able to go to another section of the puzzle, figure out the row and the column, look at what piece I needed and go, okay, that's what I'm looking for. And in the end, it wasn't missing. I had a little panic attack. But the other thing about having the same cut is that I would be able to take that piece from another puzzle, get some thick cardboard, and actually cut out a piece that would fit. And my husband's very, very handy and very crafty. He could actually paint and replicate whatever the piece that's missing probably quite closely, especially if it was just like the wooden bookshelf part. Um, I know that if I was actually missing a piece, I could contact Graphica and they would help me out. But luckily enough, it was just my poor sorting and I put it in the wrong pile. So nothing to worry about there. Um, besides that, I'm not sure if there was anything else that I want to talk about. Oh. I am interested, and there's three more bookshelf sections to be done. I wonder if my time will improve now that I've done one. And also, I sorted by color of books, but I think I would sort not just by color, but the designs on the books. The books were actually really enjoyable to put together, and I quickly got a hang of the different designs and the what's that called the spine of the book you know the this part of the book i forget what it's called where the design it's very ornate and beautiful and i also loved all the little trinkets that are part of the bookshelf i can't wait to do the other sections to see what they have there i love the globe of course anything to do with maps and the old style telephone uh, it was just this was really enjoyable it was a nice break from just doing like the paintings and the frames so quite interesting i'll probably do three more sections and then end up coming back and do another bookshelf section but overall very much enjoyed it i really really appreciate you being here for the love of puzzles Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope you enjoy them. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!